Hello and welcome to ProTrader Strategies Market Commentary for Friday, October the 28th. My name is Eric Wilkinson. Some of you may recognize me as the Wolfman from CNBC, Fox Business, or even the Wall Street Journal, where I've commented on everything from economic to geopolitical and market analysis. Please keep in mind that everything that we talk about in these daily market commentaries is not a solicitation to buy or sell any of these securities or strategies. At the end of the day, we're here to teach you some different strategies that you can implement into your own portfolios, but please do that in your own way. The reason why I can't give you a recommendation on a particular stock or strategy is because I don't know your risk parameters. I don't know what's in your portfolios, and therefore, what I'm doing could be counterintuitive to what you are already doing. Having that out of the way, let's get this on. A uh, little bit of economic data today. We got flash uh, CPI, Consumer Price Index, across in Europe across the pond there, and it came in at 0.7 versus the expected 0.3. We also got the uh, Spanish flash, uh, sorry, that was the F Spanish flash consumer price index, and the uh, French preliminary CPI came in at unchanged versus the expected 0.2%, and the French spending, uh, consumer spending came in at negative 0.2 versus the expected coming in at positive 0.3. We also got German preliminary CPI coming in at 0.2 versus the expected 0.1. And French GDP came, preliminary GDP came in at 0.2 versus 0.3. Um, then we also got here in the United States, we got advanced GDP here, came in at 2.9%, was expected to be 2.5%. So that could start signaling uh, indication that the Fed should start raising rates because that is right around the target that they uh, went to start raising interest rates. We also got the advanced GDP price index came in at 1.5%, was expected to be 1.3%. So both those GDP numbers here in the United States came in higher than expected. And we got the uh, University of Michigan consumer sentiment coming in at 87.2, expected to be 88.2. Two, so a little bit higher than expected. And finally, we got the uh, employment cost index came in at uh, 0.6, right in line with expectations. Um, then over to the overall markets, we've got crude oil here down just slightly, 22 cents on the day, but below that $50 a barrel mark. And the 61.8 Fibonacci level has been uh, holding strong as a support level. So keep that line in the sand. Uh, on your docket and the $50 a barrel area is going to act as a resistance. So it's a very tight range right there. Uh, on to gold futures, forward slash GC, uh, down one and a half points on the day and still below that 200 day moving average that I've talked so much about. And as we continue to trade sideways here, uh, for one, it's making my strata look good, but this line, uh, the 50, 50, 50 day moving average is getting closer to the 200 day moving average. And when those cross, that becomes a bearish trend. So keep that uh, in mind going forward. On to the bonds, forward slash ZB. As you can see, this is really getting very close to lining up uh, and flipping over with the 50 day moving average moving below the 200 day moving average very close there uh, bonds down on the day but finding support here on the 61.8 Fibonacci level uh, we finally broke below that in yesterday just a big sell-off today finding support and keep in mind that the 61.8 Fibonacci level just happens to line up with the value area low so that is going to be a very powerful support level there uh, on to the Dow Jones Industrial Average, forward slash, or sorry, uh, dollar sign DJI. Uh, this 50-day moving average continuing to act as resistance for the bulls. Uh, it can't seem to really break through and stay above that, despite the fact that the Dow Jones is up 61 points. More broader equities are up today uh, based on uh, good economic data. They haven't started throwing a fit thinking that the Fed is going to start raising rates as of yet, but uh, that could be interesting to note. Uh, as you can see here, NASDAQ up 26 points on the day and finding support right there at the point of control. Under the E-mini S&Ps, again, 
uh, up on the day, up nine points on the day. Let's look at the breakdown of the daily chart. As you can see, overnight we did make new lows, but uh, as soon as the European session opened up and started getting good economic data across the pond, the market started rallying, and then when we got our good economic data, we really blasted off to the highs. Just seeing a bit of profit taking going on right now, and it's consolidating as we go. Uh, a couple of things that I've done here today, uh, added a couple of trades here. I missed the uh, earnings trades. I just uh, started looking at them. It didn't look like it was a good risk reward for me, but as you can see, uh, Amazon is down quite big today on better than expected earnings. So I decided to uh, do a credit spread in here. And the way I did this is I had to build it as a one by two for the most part. So, or actually it's a two by one. And I did it in the December and um, sold two of the 750 puts and then bought one of the 780 puts. And the reason why I did that, I did sold two of the 750 puts to finance those 780 puts. So it gives me a little bit of room to the downside, uh, down to about the value area here. I don't really see Amazon coming off that much. I'm a bit surprised as the pullback here. And for that strategy on the two by one, I collected a dollar 70 for that. So if the market rallies up, I get to keep that dollar 70 if the market uh, sells off a little bit further, I'll be able to make a little bit more money than that uh, as long as it stays above my 750 strikes. All right. Uh, then on to the other earnings trade that we had here was in Amgen. And I decided to go in there. Volatility actually increased after this event here. And uh, with Amgen, I just decided to throw in a strangle uh, just to wrap it around that. It seems like it's probably a little bit overdone to the downside also down 10 percent um i could easily see it starting to consolidate here it looked a little bit better this morning when the market started coming back for me a little bit but uh since then has started sliding again but take trying to take advantage of some high volatility and hopefully get a bit of a volatility crush in there so i did the december again and sold the 130 puts and the 160 calls and was able to collect $2.45 for that. So it's a little bit tight on the upside, but I still have quite a bit of room to the downside for the 30 puts before I have to start working, uh, worrying too much about them. That would be a 52 week low, well below a 52 week low. So trying to take advantage of that. It's not really looking that bad for Amgen, but uh, the overall market beating them up. All right, so that's why I did those trades. Today we're going to be looking at doing long, or sorry, short straddles, and the short straddle is going to be great for a sideways trending market, like we've seen in a lot of different uh, underlyings. GDXJ is a good one for that, uh, and I'll go around all my rules why I would pick something like GDXJ and implement that into a portfolio using a straddle. All right, so go to ProTraderStrategies.com, sign up for that. If you can't take that. Take it easy.